Istanbul, one of the most important cities in history and the only city in the world to span two continents. It's a cultural melting pot where East meets West across the Bosphorus Strait. It's huge, busy and one of the world's most visited cities, but is a place that's been on our bucket list for so many years and we're so excited to finally be able to see it. <laughs> We are about to board the Sofia to Istanbul Express. Let's go to Turkey. So this is our cabin for the night. It's pretty basic. Yeah, but, but quite spacious. Yeah. Better than those buses. <laughs> For sure. So these two seats come out and create like a full bed. I think that's another bed on top. Got our own little sink, mirror, hangers if we wanted. Full view out of the window. Also got a fridge with some complimentary snacks and the strangest looking water yogurt pots. And if we wanted to eat, this basically becomes our table we only paid like 36 euros per person for this cabin so this is like a double cabin so there's no other people in here just us so yeah we're excited Welcome to Turkey guys and welcome to Istanbul. Istanbul! So we're currently here in Taksim Square which is a huge square in the centre of the city. We are going to be spending the next four days exploring this amazing place so we're really... Fingers crossed it will be enough but yeah. I doubt it because I keep adding things to do on my map already so there we'll see. There is so much here. So the first place we're going to go into is the Hajj Sophia behind us, probably one of the most famous buildings in the world. But look at the queue. It starts all the way over there, all the way around. It's moving pretty quickly, so we'll see how long it will take us. I think we need to time it a little bit, don't we? <laughs> Wow, so the Hajj Sophia definitely does not disappoint. Oh my god, it was so beautiful inside. Although it is crowded, you don't really hear because you always just look up and look at the beautiful ceiling and it's just such a beautiful place. It really has a special feeling in there and it's just absolutely gorgeous. Fortunately, we went to the Blue Mosque a little bit earlier, which is just across the square, but it's under like massive renovation at the moment, so you can't actually go out into the courtyard. All you can do is walk into the actual interior, but again, it's like all scaffolded up, so you can't see anything. Yeah, it was a bit of a disappointment because we're only yeah. here once. One time, maybe. And, uh, but thank so, God, it's just our luck. At least I Sophia wasn't. <laughs> So we left the Hagia Sophia behind and hopped across the road into another queue for the Basilica Cistern. This incredible underground cistern was built in the 6th century and is the largest of many similar structures located beneath Istanbul. It's supported by 336 marble columns and would have been a vital water source for Topkapi Palace during the Ottoman reign. I really love this place, it's just something that I don't think I've ever seen before. Seriously. 
honestly incredible. Like, it's just crazy to think how long this has been here. It reminds me a little bit of the Mines of Moria from Lord of the Rings. It's got that kind of vibe. is definitely one of the busiest places we've been on our trip so far. It is just absolutely rammed and it's not even the height of the summer. So you are going to queue a lot when you come to Istanbul, but for the most part, everything we've been to so far has been absolutely worth queuing for. There's been nothing that we've been disappointed with. You just got to be aware that you are going to queue a lot. So just behind the Hajj Sufi... Oh. <laughs> So just behind the Hajj Sophia here is the Topkapi Palace and we're in these beautiful little gardens just in front of it. And the Topkapi Palace used to be the home of the Ottoman emperors whilst they ruled over here in Istanbul. It's now a museum with lots of different places to explore so we're going to head inside and, and show you around. More queuing. So far the entry prices have been like pretty reasonable, around like 10 euros for a few things. Some things have even been free like the Hajj Sophia. Top Kapi Palace is the first one that was a little bit more expensive. This one costs like 20 euros per person to get in which you know is quite steep but hopefully it's going to be worth it. Like I said everything else has been worth it up to this point yeah. even if you have to queue for a little bit. Spoiler alert, it was 100% worth it. The palace is enormous and there are so many rooms, courtyards and exhibitions to explore. The interior is stunning and there are places around the palace where you can get some incredible views of Istanbul. And make sure you pay the extra fee to visit the harem as it's probably the most beautiful part of the palace. Wow, this palace is seriously impressive and absolutely massive. You definitely get your money's worth coming in here. There's like four different sections, loads of different rooms off the sides that are like museums for loads of different artifacts and things. So it's 100% worth coming in. Definitely buy the harem ticket as well. It gives you like a massive extra area you can explore for not too much more. So while we're in Istanbul, we decided to eat our way through the city as usual because the food just looks amazing here, so we can't wait to try everything. We started off by buying some of these like pretzel-like little roundy pastries from any of the street sellers. They sell them literally everywhere, so they look really nice and a lot of people are eating them as like little snacks. So we decided to get one. It was uh, 5 Turkish lira. Let's give it a go. Mm. It's really nice. It's just like pastry with like sesame seeds on it. They thought they sell them like with Nutella and all sorts. So definitely give it a try. It's a nice little snack. So to end our first day in the city, we headed to the Seven Hills restaurant and made our way up to their roof terrace to watch the sunset with some incredible views of both the Hagia Sophia and the Blue Mosque. As a bonus, they also leave out some leftover food which you can use to feed the seagulls and capture some creative photos of the backdrop. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> that was great.
So after the sunset, we managed to squeeze in one more unique activity. The whirling dervishes ceremony is a tribute to the 13th century mystic Mevlana Rumi and his followers who were known as the Mevlevi order. The Mevlevis were also known as the whirling dervishes because of their practice of whirling as a form of remembrance of God. The entire ceremony and music was almost hypnotic and the performers seemed to be in a trance-like state while spinning. It was really interesting to see. First impressions of Istanbul are it is definitely one of the busiest and most crazy hectic cities that we've ever been to. When you walk around the streets in the morning it's not so bad but later in the afternoon and evening Wow. <laughs> so, so busy. Having said that though, it's just such an eclectic mix of different cultures and the people are just super friendly. Every single shop front just looks incredible. Know, There's so many sweet every, shops. Yeah. We're really excited to explore. It's day two now and we're going to be hopefully going over to the Asian side today. So it might, might offer something different again. Yeah, we're excited about that because we've never been to Asia before. So this is our first time. But first we're going to start the morning by getting a traditional Turkish breakfast. I'm very excited about it because we've heard it's a lot of food. When you order a Turkish breakfast you get a huge selection of things to eat. Spreads like peanut butter, jams and honey, cheeses, eggs, tomatoes and olives, salad and unlimited bread and tea. It's an absolute feast. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we are full. <laughs> I think that was probably the best breakfast I've ever eaten in my life. It was really nice and a lot of food. There was just such a range of stuff, like savory yeah. stuff, sweet stuff, loads of cheeses, Unlimited olives. Tea oh and my bread. gosh. <laughs> we had to stop them from bringing more bread <laughs> out because like, I can't fit any more in my stomach. <laughs> Honestly, the best breakfast I've ever had. Worth the money. As yes, well. it was about six pounds per person, which really isn't too bad when you consider how much food you actually get. I know. And it's definitely going to fill us up until dinner time, that's for sure. <laughs> couldn't walk across the bridge over to the Asian side, which is what we thought we would be able to do. But actually, we probably want to do this way anyway because it's a lot better. You can take a boat from one side of the river all the way over the Bosphorus to the other. And actually, the boat ride is just classed as a standard ticket price for the ticket card, the metro card. So it's included in all the, the transport. So it really is very cheap to get across here. It's not any extra. Excited to be in Asia. Yes, first time in Asia. Number four. Continent number four. Welcome to Asia. How does it feel to be in Asia for the first time? I mean, it doesn't feel much different, does it? Not no. really. <laughs> still in Istanbul, you're still in the same country, so. I guess it's just a thought of that you're in a different continent now. So it's a bit of a novelty. It's nice to be on this new continent, but we definitely need to explore Asia more in the future. Yes. Yeah, we're gonna have a look around the Asian side today, try and show you whether it's worth coming over here or not, because a lot of people just stay on the European side. That's it's... where the most attractions are for mm -hmm. tourists, but we'll see what we can get up to here. Yeah, hopefully there's quite a bit on the Asian side too that'll make it worth coming over here. The 
The area where you get dropped off the boat is called Karakoy and straight away you notice it's very different to the European side. You won't find any baklava shops or Turkish delight shops on every corner. It's more like a normal high street, coffee shops dotted all over the place. It's very much just like a normal city vibe. But straight away there it's very different, not as many tourists, way quieter. So there's a small market area you can walk through though where they sell a lot of olives and fish. An area where the walls are covered in artwork. And also we stumbled upon this very unique Halloween themed cafe which serves your drinks in some really cool ways. Look, uh, we found this little cafe which has like Halloween themed drinks and the whole shop is so cool. Look at that little Turkish coffee mug. It's a little cauldron. <laughs> I love it. Definitely the coolest themed cafe I think we've been to. So far, the best part of the Asian side is that there's no crowd. <laughs> so nice. This is Kamilka Mosque and this is the biggest mosque in Istanbul and the whole of Turkey. Uh, this one has six minarets. It's humongous, it's really big, it's really beautiful actually inside. It's definitely worth coming here if you have the time to come over to the Asian side. This place is huge. <laughs> Wow, this mosque is really incredible and amazingly not a lot of tourists come here still. It it's is a bit far outside to be fair and it's a bit yeah. complicated to get to. But... It's definitely the highlight of the Asian side for sure. No trip to Istanbul would be complete without a trip to the bazaars. There are actually two. One of them is the Grand Bazaar, the other one is the Spice Bazaar. And we are currently in the Grand Bazaar. We're going to be exploring and showing you around. Already it's apparent just how much stuff you could buy here and how much money how you much could spend. Genuine <laughs> The Grand Bazaar is one of the largest and oldest covered markets in the world with over 4,000 separate shops inside. It's huge and at times disorientating, but it is an absolute must when visiting Istanbul. You could spend days browsing for all sorts of items and souvenirs and most likely get lost while doing so. crazy experience. The place is just so huge. The Grand Bazaar itself is big but even when you leave the bazaar the markets just stretch outside for like kilometers. Massive area outside and inside. We did all right we got away with not buying too much stuff but just some nice kind of souvenirs. Gonna go and explore the spice market now. Yeah.
The Egyptian bazaar or spice bazaar is the place to go if you want to buy all sorts of sweets and spices. With over 80 shops selling Turkish delight, dried fruits and nuts, chocolate, spices and teas, you won't have any trouble finding something delicious to try. Mm -hmm. So pretty actually and the smell is amazing. Yeah. So we're trying today the cheese and the cheese and spinach one. So let's see. It's mm. good. It's really nice. Actually, having it with these little yellow peppers is really nice. They're kind of like not any spicier than jalapenos, really. So if you like jalapenos, really good, but just add a really nice flavor and a little bit of spice to it. After lunch, we walked along Istiklal Street, probably the most famous shopping street in Istanbul, and because of that, one of the busiest. You can take the old tram up and down, or walk along this pedestrianized street and stop to look in every single amazing shop or cafe window. Each one looks more tempting than the last. So we couldn't resist these shops any longer, so we decided to like, treat ourselves with something very, very Look at these. I don't know how we're going to get through this. We're going to put on so much weight in Turkey. And don't forget to try some Turkish ice cream for a one-of-a-kind experience. Very close to Istiklal Street is the Galata Tower, a huge watchtower turned museum that can be seen from almost anywhere in Istanbul. You can go up for some amazing panoramic views of the city, especially during sunset or at night, although it's a little expensive and if you're on a budget, we have a great alternative we'll share later in this video. To end the day, we headed down to the Galata Bridge to watch the sun set over the city as the fishermen hauled in the day's catch and the birds swooped overhead. We can highly recommend spending at least one day watching the sun go down by the river. Of course we can't miss coming to this area called Bawat here in Istanbul, which used to be a very unique quiet spot. Mm. Oh, we've got mm. a cat visitor. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Where was I? It used to be like a quite unique thing to do here in Istanbul, but obviously nowadays because we've got these beautiful, colourful houses and things, it's become more and more insta famous. So you'll see a lot of content creators around this area. But we couldn't miss the opportunity to come here and take some pictures because we love the colourful district. Oh, there we go, you found one. Ah, that's cute. So 
definitely recommend the visit and you can come pretty early in the morning like 9 a.m and there literally won't be that many people here at all no, um, compared to the other locations oh, yeah. we've been to this it's is like definitely the, the quietest so and you can get some really cool and, and unique kind of shots so yeah highly recommend Next, we headed across the city to Dormabachi Palace, a huge and ornate Ottoman Sultan's palace on the shores of the Bosporus. The palace is beautiful to explore, but it does come with a catch. So, walking around this palace has probably been one of the most mixed experiences we've had. I know, it's, it was a very much of a love-hate. Yeah. First of all, you can't take photos inside, so we can't show you how the palace looks inside. But trust us when we say that it's 100% worth going in there. It was it's just amazing. Like One of the most wow. like opulent palaces I think yeah. I've ever seen. It's definitely jaw-dropping yeah. experience. Especially like the grand uh, chamber oh, and, right. the and the staircase. staircase they're just stunning. so stunning. So when we got to there, we can't take photos. On the other hand, oh my god, was it busy? <laughs> I think a number one tip would just be to come here. If you want to come oh, here, come man. as soon as it opens. <laughs> Try and avoid all of the tour groups. We're really quite close to where the cruise ships dock. So I think you get a lot of massive tour groups coming in from the cruise ships. We and felt it, like sheep. You like just sheep. herded just like herded. cattle, like all the way through. It's a one-way system. It kind of really takes away from the beauty of the place. 100% worth coming, but don't make our mistake and just come <laughs> first thing as soon as don't it opens. Don't eat your breakfast for no. too long, like we did. <laughs> We left the palace and hopped on a bus further up the shore to the Autokoi district and headed down to the waterfront where you can get an amazing view of the Grand Mesidie Mosque and 15th of July Martyrs Bridge which connects Europe with Asia across the Bosphorus. So one thing we can highly recommend when you come here to Istanbul is obviously you can go to the Blue Mosque but a great alternative is to come up to the Suleymaniye Mosque. It's only the second biggest city in the whole of Turkey. Yes. So definitely worth a visit and the interior is just amazing. So it's beautiful. really beautiful considering the fact that at the moment as of us filming this video the Blue Mosque is under renovation and you can't really see anything. Yeah. This one is a really magnificent uh, alternative. Plus, if you go just across the street, there is an amazing little cafe there where you get some incredible views out over Istanbul. Probably equally as good as the Galata Tower. Of course, from this cafe, you can actually see the tower, so it's even better. Yeah. You can see the Bosporus Strait. It's just beautiful Plus, there. yeah, the entrance fee is a lot cheaper because you only really have to pay for like a tea to, to get that view. Exactly. Really good recommendations to come over and, and, and come up here to see, to see all that. Istanbul. What a city. Whatever you do, add Istanbul to your bucket list because you will not regret it. <laughs>